hey hi all so yeah i hope you're all safe and you know healthy during these tough times wish you all a good health and yeah keep your family safe so today's video is all about the interviews the interview experience that i had and um, so i want to talk about the 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 i want don't want to talk about the success stories of the interview but i want to talk about the failures that led to the success so the i i attended kind of uh, interviews from amazon microsoft uh, qualcom but i couldn't crack them i kind of lost it in, in the middle rounds maybe third or fourth round some kind of went to almost lost one and then i lost it so i don't know sometimes when you kind of don't get a job from your interviews so it's not just that uh, your ability or any of that sort but sometimes it depends on a lot of things but one major contribution to all this is your performance of course your performance in the interview is a major reason of you being selected to a job of course there will be n number of factors also so but owing to what we can do from our end uh, to getting selected for the job is to give out the best interview that we could so if of course if you attend a lot of interviews you get a lot of experience so which i had i just wanted to share Mm, and there is no right or wrong uh, in, in, uh, in kind of judging the candidate when they answer the questions, but how they answer and how do they, uh, you know, approach a problem is what most of the interviewers see. So I mean, I see that at least when I do interviews. So I don't have an anchor here, so I myself is the an anchor, and so I, I just want to I'll have an iPad where it asks a question and an answer. So the first question is. Yep. So, what do they typically ask? Uh, I think m most of the tech companies, big companies, they ask about uh, all the questions related to your projects. So, not just what you put on your project, but when you write something about the project, they know the understanding of the project, how you have approached, and things like that. So, they wanted to just understand how you have built that project and how you have come up with the solution and things like that. So, as you move on in the project discussion. They keep uh, coming up with multiple questions that are related to the things that you have used in the project. Like for example, you have used some data pre-processing technique. Uh, then how did you do it? They ask. And then they come up with, then you said like, okay, I use this technique. And then there is um, a class imbalance problem. How did you address the problem? They ask. And then you have to answer, uh, okay, so I use some techniques, not or whatever, to come up with a good uh, you know, a, a class imbalance problem. So to address the class imbalance problem, and then uh, so it's all about what you say in the interview, and uh, it's all about your projects. But it's not just related to like simply explaining your projects. But they also ask why you have used this, why not other algorithms, and things like that. And so you should be aware of your projects, of course. Yeah, that's a, that's the best thing that you have to be prepared about so it's not just that you should not think from uh, only projects the only part perspective but a little bit research around yep the second question so why it is tricky to crack yeah so if it is just project why it is so tricky to crack yeah so the, here comes the point so when they so for example if someone wants to know your project uh, so where you have implemented linear regression so they ask, explain the project or whatever. Then you start telling that, I have a number of independent variables and I have one dependent variable. So I'll go and apply linear regression. So here you're talking from the application perspective of the algorithm, but not from, uh, you know, the, the sole, the base development of the algorithm, the, like the mathematics or from the where it is developed and what is the idea behind applying the linear regression. So, we should talk about that and most importantly why linear regression and why not decision trees if something of this sort come this question comes up 90 out of 100 uh, you know people will answer this saying that uh, yeah so because i tried both these decision trees and linear regression i felt linear regression has better accuracy 90 out of 100 people will say this but this is not what you're supposed to say yeah even i i, I told the same answer but i felt that's not the right answer because in industries, people don't just try 10 algorithms and then come up with one. They do an EDA, you know, they take a lot of time for EDA on the data and then they, they say that they filter and they you know, jog it down to maybe one or two algorithms and then they try them. It's not like you have only one algorithm as an answer, but 
you need to do EDA and then you should come up with what kind of models you need to build. So when you do EDA in the data, you will find some of the loopholes. Maybe you know a data is having some kind of correlation or data is having a lot of features or data is having some outliers. So whenever data is having some sort of a loophole, there is a prescribed algorithm that you should use for this based on your research, based on your theoretical background, you will know that. So if you don't know that, then yeah, you're in trouble. So that's where they ask uh, what algorithm you used and why did you use this instead of that. And most of the interviews that I take, people answer the same way. So they say, yeah, I tried linear regression, name base, decision trees, everything. I felt linear regression is on top, but you should not try it after uh, getting the accuracy. You should not say that, okay, since it has better accuracy, I'm gonna go for it. That's not right because if that uh, all, you know if the project has to be delivered in one month, you cannot sit and uh, you know try out multiple algorithms. Yeah, that's that's why it's tricky. The next question. Mm -hmm. The thing is programming wrong. There is no question here, but how do we attend programming wrong? Yeah, I never had any issues with the programming uh, wrong. It's Python. Python is you know, good for me. I have I've been working on Python, but I think. Whoever has issues with the Python or programming rounds, I think the best way is to go for Hacker Rank, Hacker Earth, start coding, do at least like two codings, coding uh, skills, uh, practice, uh, class, something of that sort in a week. You know, go for Code Chef. There are a lot of platforms where you can start practicing the, you know, about programming. So, and they don't see the logic. Uh, sorry, they don't see the code. They see they all see about is the logic that you write. So. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the syntax nobody remembers Python syntax it's very tricky and you have a lot of things coming in a lot of libraries so all they care about is how well you can uh, write a logic using Python programming language so there are a lot of things that happen in Python there are classes there are different there are functions and there are exceptional errors how do you handle how do you put them how do you how do you write the code so all that is very important is not just like writing a set of bunch of lines it's about like how you frame the whole code so that's it that's where you know the python programming skill comes into the picture it has its memory based operations it has like using one better than the other the shallow hollow copy uh, and a shallow copy the deep copy so a lot of things you know there are a lot of concepts in python that will explain the in and depth of the, the programming language so I, I would say like go for it and then read not just the programming but also a little bit of theory behind how where to use which kind of uh, uh, things like this tuples all these things yeah yeah get, get get along the basics of the python and then uh, understand language structure it's it's much it's much important it's the only language as of now is being much, you know, used everywhere so where most of the people fail yeah, so most of the people, as I said earlier, they fail on uh, in the way they explain their projects. So when we start explaining about the project, we always say from the application perspective, but we never talk about the business value that the pro project brings in. So uh, I would suggest don't focus on the algorithm, but focus on the business value that, that the project that you have built bought in. Uh, bought in. So, people give more value to that because that's what is the sole thing right you you try a MNS data set you have put it on your resume even if you start explaining that 10 people have tried it 10 people will explain the same but what business value MNS data brings in or you know if you have done some project in your okay then you're in your uh, in your company then you should talk about you know what kind of business value that particular project has bought in so if you don't explain in that manner and you will be one among 10 people so there is no big thing about you doing the project and, and i see almost 50 out of 50 50 out of 60 resumes having same projects so docker classification mnis data said don't put all those projects just put the ones that i think which are best i used to do that and then i came i, I understood like it's not that the way it has to be so then I realized that we have to do some industrial level projects which we have to put on the uh, resume to attract uh, the recruiters so you have to do something that makes a lot of sense and also um, yeah the last question so how to drive the interview okay 
So, um, how do we drive it? Um, the first thing is, the way you prepare your resume mat matters the most. So, whatever you put on your resume, recruiters are going to ask that. How do you prepare your resume? I'm gonna do one more video on how do we prepare our resume. But in a nutshell, you don't have to put every algorithm that you learnt as part of your theory on your resume. And number two, don't no, don't put your um, you know algorithms under skill set. Skill set is totally different from algorithms. Algorithms are very different. Okay, skills are like C plus plus, Python, Python libraries, deep learning computer vision, but not linear regression, but not naive but not decision trees. No, that's not skill. So skill is totally a different kind of a meaning, and algorithm is having a totally different kind of meaning. So don't put your algorithms under skill background and most importantly don't put algorithms that you have learned as part of your theory because the, the point is if you've done something and learned from as part of your theory if you put it in the practical knowledge it totally changes totally totally changes so the way that you understand the algorithm from theoretical background will completely flourish and then you, you have to come up with a new way of thinking about how do we apply this algorithm so never put an algorithm that you lent as part of your theory in your resume i did it when i did it they kept asking me about those questions and i couldn't answer so it's always okay to say excuse to a recruiter saying that i don't know that algorithm or i have only theoretical background 50 percent of the recruiters are okay with that but 50 percent get you know they, they get mad about you no know, why do you have to put it on your resume when you don't know the algorithm yeah 50 percent of the recruiters feel that way and if they feel that way you're done. So why to take risk of putting an algorithm on the resume that you are only half aware of and then when the recruiters ask something about it, why do you have to brag? The whole thing is, yeah, because most of the people say, if I put every algorithm on the resume, my resume gets shortlisted. No, that's what I heard from most of the people, but that's not true. That's not totally, totally true. Um, you don't have to put every algorithm. If you have to put every algorithm, then you have to write some 20 pages of your resume because there are a lot of algorithms out there. Don't, don't just think in that direction, that's not the right way and uh, most of the people are not focusing that way. So don't put the things that you are not aware of or that you have worked some 10 years ago and then you totally forgot. You don't, don't put those things on your resume and then make it complicated. Put about the skills that you are learning every day, talk about the things that you know and that you are intact with. Don't put about the projects, don't highlight the projects that you have done some 5 years ago or don't highlight the things that you just started. So you started some project and then you put it on your resume, people start asking about it and then you can say okay I just started doing it. So recruiter feels like like why do you have to put it on your resume man then when, when, when you just started it. So so that's all like so that's the major major thing so you can drive your interview based on your resume. If your resume is having the content that you are quite good at, then you can crack the interview. There is nobody stopping you from doing it. It's okay to say that I don't know an algorithm when recruiters ask something out of your resume. It's okay to say that I did not work on that, but I will work. That is okay. Nobody will take it wrong. But if you put it on your resume and then if you don't do it or if you don't talk about it in the interview, people go mad. So, Remember all these things, prepare well for the interviews and this is not a big thing. You apply for 500 jobs, you get some 20 interviews, get one job. So just be patient and do well. So all the best. Godspeed.